Hey there, community groups. Welcome to session number five. Let's jump right into Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Let me get started with a quick running start into what we're studying tonight. Let us not pass judgment on one another. Again, turn to Romans chapter 14. We'll be diving right into verse 13. So hopefully you're getting close. Let me read you the passage. Let's talk about the context. And then I hope you'll have a great discussion time again together tonight. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. 13. Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. Now, what exactly does Paul mean here? When Paul admonishes us to avoid being a stumbling block, what exactly is he talking about? Well, the more you study out this parallel passage to the 1 Corinthians 8 passage, on the eating of meat offered to idols, which I'll get to in a second, the more you study out what Paul's referring to, he's really talking about people who have an unhealthy focus on one of two extremes when it comes to obeying God. There's the extreme of law. In other words, all I'm doing is obeying, there's no heart behind it, and all I'm doing is making sure that the outward conformity or this legalistic approach, I'm making sure that that is the side I give my full attention to. That's the law. The other side is liberty. Hey, listen, Jesus saved me. According to Romans 8, there is no condemnation. I can do whatever I want, <clears throat> which of course is not true. In fact, Paul goes on later to explain, should we continue in sin so the grace can abound? By no means, or God forbid. So those are the two extremes when it comes to being a stumbling block or passing judgment that people often assume, one extreme or the other. So what exactly is God calling us to do here, or really, what is he calling us to avoid? Notice what Paul says here. Let us not pass judgment on one another. So what exactly does he mean? Well, in order to pass judgment, what you're doing is you're assessing the spiritual condition of a brother or sister in Christ. And typically when that happens, it's because we disagree with the way that that brother or sister has done or not done something. And there's hot button issues that perhaps you'll want to dive into in your group, but uh, maybe it's not the best idea. But hot button issues like music or dress or other similar guidelines today, there's disagreement within the body of Christ. And so if I assess a person's spiritual condition based on what I believe and what they're doing, then I'm essentially falling prey to exactly what Paul's talking about here. I'm passing judgment on a brother or sister in Christ. And what he's enjoining us to do is to avoid that. He's saying, don't pass judgment any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block into the way of a brother. Now, I'd love for you to discuss what stumbling block means. It comes from the Greek word scandalon, which sounds a lot like an English word. I want to give you a chance to look that up and then discuss how it could possibly be passing judgment or assessing a person's spiritual condition is something that could potentially be scandalous. Now, I want to be careful here because when we're talking about judgment in context here, we're talking about something that's not a clear known violation of God's law. All right. So if it's a known sin that God's word is 100% abundantly clear on, there's a way to handle that, isn't there? In fact, God always teaches us in his word to speak the truth in love. And so we're not talking about something that's known sin. You still want to approach sin. You don't want to just turn a blind eye to people who are knowingly sinning. And then you don't want to just pass that off as okay. But you speak the truth in a loving and kind way to people that are like that. You know, even the example of Jesus, who Isaiah tells us was like a sheep before her shears and he didn't even open his mouth. He was condemned. He was despised. And yet he didn't open his mouth in defense. That's not a person who is, who's pointing a finger. In fact, Jesus himself said, if you're weary, if you're heavy laden, come to me. My burden is light. My burden's easy and it's light. Jesus was not the kind of person who always pointed out a person's sin. In fact, when given the opportunity with that woman who was caught in the act of adultery in the very act, what did he do? He drew in the sand and, his, and the woman's accusers walked away. And, and Jesus told the woman, I don't accuse you either. So this is the sort of approach that we have when there are people who are in known sin. We acknowledge that sin and there's a, a gentle and gracious way to handle that. But that's not what we're talking about here. 
In fact, the parallel passage in 1 Corinthians 8 is about people who were eating meat that was offered to idols. And that's very similar to what Paul is discussing here. And so there we catch some insight into what Paul means. In the 1 Corinthians 8 passage, what he was saying is that it's not sinful to eat that meat that's been offered to idols. Typically, it was cheaper, a discounted meat. And so eating that was not wrong for a believer. But if it were offensive to other believers, Paul says, I'd avoid it. Remember how Paul mentions that all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable or expedient. That's really the principle here. Rather than assessing a person's spiritual condition, because there's, there's an area where we disagree with them, and it's not known sin, but we disagree with them, and so I'm going to pass judgment on them for their spiritual condition. Paul says, rather than doing that, don't put a stumbling block in the way of a brother or sister in Christ. Well, it's gonna make for a great discussion for you and your group today. Don't forget, if you look at the rest of the context of this passage, I am not the ultimate judge, am I? God himself is, and so I would never take on a responsibility that belongs to God alone. You'll have a great time discussing it together, so I hope you enjoy this particular study of yet another of our One Another's Enjoy It. <music>